this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and in this video I'm going to look at Windows 7 running under Boot Camp on the MacBook Pro with Retina Display. That means you can run both Windows and Mac OS X on this. As you know, I mean, you could actually even wipe out OS X if you wanted to, but don't do it. OS X is pretty nice. Anyway, we're going to show you how to do it, and with Boot Camp, it's pretty neat. You either choose to boot into Windows or into Mac, and Apple has a utility that allows you to partition the hard drive. It'll do it for you. Don't partition it yourself, in fact. It'll walk you through that in setting a boot camp, and it'll let you set aside a portion of the SSD to be devoted to Windows. It won't hurt your Macintosh partition. Don't worry, you won't lose your stuff or anything like that. So we'll take a look at running Windows 7 on the MacBook Pro with Retina Display now, and we'll find out what 2880 by 1800 looks like actually just running like that without any kind of scaling effect or pixel doubling. All right, before we show you Windows, We'll just show you what Boot Camp's like. For those of you who haven't ever set up Windows on a Mac before using Boot Camp, if you have, now's a great time to go grab your, your can of Coca-Cola and come back in about two seconds. We go into Utilities, and then we choose Boot Camp Assistant. And it tells you this is for setting up Mac, Windows on your Mac. And here's the options here. You can create an install disk. That's because you don't have an optical drive here. So if you have a Windows 7 ISO image, or Windows 8 for that matter, you can make a bootable USB flash drive out of it. Or you can just plug in an external optical drive and ignore this step right here, which is what I did, because I do have an external optical drive and a Windows 7 CD that I used, or DVD rather. Now you see, download the latest Windows support software from Apple. When you go through that step, if you have it checked and you hit continue, it's going to connect to Apple servers and it's going to download a complete set of setup files for all the drivers you need under Windows to run this machine. And that takes up about a gig space. And what I did is I downloaded it and I had it put it on a USB flash drive. It takes about a gig, so you can use a small flash drive for that. And after you install Windows, you just run setup on that flash drive and it installs all the drivers at once for you. It's pretty seamless, pretty painless. And you get good stuff like the, the multi-touch trackpad drivers here. You do get the NVIDIA dedicated graphics, GT650M drivers. Everything that you need is there. And you can see right now it says remove Windows 7 because I've already, been install already installed it. But if you had not yet installed it, it would say install Windows 7. And as you click through that, it would reboot and would boot off of your external optical drive if you have one or USB flash drive, whichever your media is on. And it would start the installation process. Now, the way it works is whatever operating system you left this in last, it's going to stick with. So if you left it in Windows and you hit reboot, say when setup is requiring a reboot, you don't have to worry that it's going to switch to Mac OS and not finish. It will stay with Windows. It will stay in Windows until you go to control panels and change your boot preference back to Mac OS X. Or otherwise, when it's booting up, you can hold down the option key, and we'll show you that later on, so you can actually choose from any bootable option, which means OS X on the hard drive here, Windows 7, a recovery disk or whatever else you've got connected. And here's what I'm talking about. When you hold down the option key when the machine is first booting up, you can see I've got my option to use Macintosh hard drive, which is a, the Mac partition, my Windows partition, or the recovery. And we want Windows in this case, so I'm going to click on that, hit the arrow key, and we're going to boot into Windows. So here we are running Windows 7 Service Pack 1 on the Retina MacBook Pro. Right now I have the screen resolution set to 1680 by 1050 because I can see it pretty, pretty easily. Now when it first boots up after you install Windows and then you install those Boot Camp drivers I told you about from uh, the USB flash drive you're going to make when you use Boot Camp Assistant, it's actually going to boot up in 2880 by 1800 resolution on a 15.4 inch display. And believe it or not, it's actually viewable because Apple, by default, sets the zoom to be uh, 150%. That's the, the text setting size inside Windows. I mean, otherwise, yeah, forget it. You really wouldn't, wouldn't be able to read the text on there. But I was shocked that it was actually readable. So right now I have it at 1680 by 1050 again. I've been running it at 1920 by 1080 with my usual 125% setting for uh, font size zooming in Windows, which is what I do, say, on the HP Envy, which has about the same size screen at 1080p to keep things pretty readable. Works just fine. We have back backlit keyboard functionality here. We have the multi-touch trackpad so I can use two fingers to do the equivalent right click as you just saw right there. Everything works well. We've got Wi-Fi drivers. We've got all that we need to get going on this. Uh, the one thing I've noticed is always power management isn't as good when you're under Windows. You seem to lose about an hour battery life under Windows versus running, versus running Mac OS. 
Speaking of performance, this scored over 20,000 in PC Mark Vantage. Wow, that's really good. That beats the Sony Vio Z third generation because this guy here has dedicated graphics, which is using when it's doing that test. And we managed over 10,000 in 3D Mark Vantage. So you've got a real powerful machine here, gaming, video editing, all that kind of stuff. So what's our Windows Experience Index like? You can see right here 7.2, and as usual, that's going to be the graphics driver that's the lowest. Because we have the SSD, we've got the maximum possible for disk data transfer rate, 7.2 for both gaming graphics and aero graphics. That's a little better than my HP NV15 latest generation, which was scoring 6.9. Memory operation, 7.8, very good. Calculations per second for your CPU, 7.6, all good stuff. Performance in Windows, excellent. Just what you would love to see in a high-end notebook. And now we're going to look at our display options here. Like I said, I had it at 1680 by 1050. I've now increased the, uh, the font scaling 150% so we can actually see this. And you can see we have bumps along the way. We've got the 1920 by 1200 resolution that's also available under Mac OS X. We've got some incremental resolutions up here, and we're going to shoot for a full 28 by 1800, so you can see what that looks like. Now, for those of you with really keen eyes, uh, well, there it is. You can actually still read text. You can see, again, we have that 150% zoom setting for Windows text and all that kind of thing, but yeah. So you can actually run a, a 1080p video, and it's only going to take up a small section of the screen, and let's check out and see what that's like. So here we have a 1080p movie trailer running and it's full resolution right here. We've got enough room to do other stuff like look at our nice little folder over there, launch up a web browser. So there it is. If you actually want to do it, you can do it and yeah, it's readable if you have decent eyes. I don't even have great eyes and I can see it. But for those of you who want to do things more normally, there is that 1920 by 1200 or 1680 by 1050 resolution. So you can see it's extremely fast. Again, I mean, this is top quality specs here. You've got this notebook with a quad core i7, the SSD drive, 8 gigs of RAM or more, depending on how you order it. So everything runs just fine. And don't forget to watch our video review of the MacBook Pro with Retina display. That's the full video review to learn everything about this machine, too. This, we're, this is just a little separate video we're doing here for those of you who want to install Windows and want to see how it runs and what the resolution is like. That's the, the primary issue there. Otherwise, this is pretty much like every other MacBook Pro with Boot Camp running Windows. Beyond that, all the ports work properly. There's USB 3.0 drivers on here. This, the audio drivers are quite good. The speakers are nice and loud and clear, just like they are under Mac OS. The back, back line for the keyboard works, the ambient light sensor. See, you've got a lot of good stuff here. Apple actually makes some very good Windows drivers. And again, the only thing is the battery run times are not quite as long. It gets pretty toasty when you're playing games, but then again, it gets pretty toasty when you're playing Diablo 3 under Mac OS X. That is just the way it is when you're playing games. You'll hear the fan come on, and you'll feel it getting warm right here around the, the G and the H keys. You can feel the heat rising off. Nothing too alarming there, but that's what it is. So that's the 2012 MacBook Pro 15-inch with Retina display running Windows 7. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube videos.